Well, I guess the question that I wanted to throw out first to kick things off with is for, for Dash and, and Jane, which is what's what was your desire to tell the story? What was the, the story behind the story, so to speak? It was a couple of things kind of combining. One is that I had seen an unfinished film by Windsor McKay, an animator I really love. He did a comic strip called Little Nemo in Slumberland. It was one of the very first like early Sunday newspaper comics. And Gertie the Dinosaur, which is one of the very first cartoons. And all of his um, cartoons were about um, drawing things that you that can't be photographed. Like Gertie is like the precursor to Jurassic Park. You know, we weren't around for dinosaurs. So we're gonna use this magic trick of drawing to be able to resurrect dinosaurs. And Little Nemo is um, dreams and the unfinished one was centaurs. Um, so it felt like there was kind of a unfulfilled um, dream by this great animator to see like an elegant, um, sophisticated um, mythological creature cartoon. Um, that was part of it. And it was also, I, um, this was uh, maybe six, five or six years ago, um, Jane ran an all women's Dungeons and Dragons group um, in Brooklyn and I would have to leave while they played. We had a, a one room apartment. So like if we were gonna get our sword and shield on, we needed. <laughs> but, um, you know, Jane painted most of the cryptids in the movie, most of the creatures. And I wanted to write something that she would enjoy kind of participating in. And 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 then also that, that, uh, that group was um, women from all over the world. So it kind of inspired the mostly um, female cast of the movie. Um, and, and honestly trying to, to write something that was um, more um, sophisticated and complicated than my first movie, like the movie I did before this, I feel like a lot of the motivation of that movie was just to see if I could make an animated movie because I'd never met someone who had, who had made an animated movie independently before. So it didn't, I thought that that wasn't really enough of a motivation that, that, um, that it, now that we've now, proven to ourselves that we could do it, we, it was time to shoot a bit higher. Totally. And more kind of a more uh, complicated um, in every possible way, technically, you know, morally, like all, all like just a more complicated script. Well, and for, for Lake, but Louisa and, and Grace, feel free to jump in. What was your first reaction upon reading this script? Well, the great news is, is, is that there's not much that's left to be surprising <laughs> um, when, you know, when it comes to kind of acting jobs or things that come in and that, you know, and, and I think what was the most, I, I was like, oh, here I am sort of reading the script that is, so um, unabashedly and unbridled um, creativity, it's just imagination that's just like pouring out of every sort of um, piece of prose within the script. And then, you know, the dialogue was acutely real and grounded. And so that felt the kind of amalgamation of those two elements made it just wholly unique. And so I think, um, you know, a part of me was like, oh, I, I'm so comforted <laughs> to know that this kind of beauty and, and pure and raw imagination still thrives in the world. Like it makes me feel happy about, um, you know, in a time, I mean, this was like four years ago <laughs> when, when it started, but it's like that, that sort of, um, like loving and graceful sort of weirdness, you know, um, is is what I think keeps us going, you know? I mean, I, I think there's so much crap, you know, and this is just beautiful and poetic and um, culturally and socially um, bold in its commentary and, uh, and imagination. And so for that, I mean, alone, just from just being like, do you want to participate? You know, I was like, yeah, sign me up. Where do, when, what do I, I don't know what's going on in this, but I would like to know. <laughs> like, didn't know what a cryptid was. And I was like, I love that I don't know. Cause I think I'm like, oh, I'm Miss Smarty Pants. I know things, you know? And I was like, I don't know. I don't actually, please educate me. <laughs> Louisa, Grace, was it a similar feeling for you when you read the script? 
For sure. I mean, yes. Well said, Lake. I mean, yes and yes. I mean, it was like, thank you. Yes. Thank and thank you for, for bringing this to me. I mean, how lucky. Um, yeah. What a duo. I mean, it's, it's always just, it's a treat to work. It's a treat to work in their company because Dash is just very, you know, all the knowledge he has and everything that inspires him to create the world is just, it's, it's like, it's so, it's so interesting. And, and um, yeah, so of course it's, it's, it's an easy, it's an easy accept. <laughs> well, and to, to go off of that, I think the animation style is so distinctive, especially the, the humans, as well as the cryptids, you know, for, for uh, Dash and, and Jane, how did you want to approach how everything would, would look, especially that dichotomy between the cryptic characters and the human ones? Um, the, the, it's all traditional animation in that it's traditional pieces, actual kind of paintings on paper. And the, uh, we use the computer to, to kind of process the images into articulated puppets. And about um, differentiating between the, the humans and the cryptids, you know, I wanted the, the humans to be um, uh, um, specifically rendered and, and um, kind of draw inspiration from the actors who um, play both in the character design and of course in the performances of the, of the humans. Um, while the creatures are kind of like Hieronymus Bosch-like, um, maybe Jane can speak, Jane painted most of them. Um, part of the uh, motivation for making the cryptids and the, the humans in, are in very different styles. You're dealing like a watercolor for most of the human figures and painted for most of the cryptids. And then Phoebe is this outlier. And we, for me, it was a little bit about creating both the distinction between those two things and then crossing that boundary because none of the rules are hard rules. Um, so like where does imagination end and reality begin is, is a little bit hazy. Um, yeah, and you know, in the movie, there's kind of humanoid passing um, human cryptids and then some of the cryptids are more like animals. And, and I tried, we had a, um, I wanted it to be like, even in the normal natural world, there's like moths and, and ladybugs. And um, I tried to put those in the frame. So it kind of felt like we we're always kind of surrounded by these beings that are a little um, operating on a different reality than us and kind of have a totally different perspective on, on what we're doing. Something else that seems to be going on, for me anyway, is that Animals are often uh, perceived as, or enjoyed in a, in a sort of a sentimental way. You know, they're loved in a sentimental way. And in this, in this, in this uh, piece, that's not what's going on. Uh, my character is, at first, possibly someone who's going to represent a sentimental approach to animals. And she does have that, but but she in but then she also winds up uh, not as much as uh, your character, Lauren, I think. Yes, <laughs> um, but you know, an understanding of animals as having uh, a moral aspect um, in terms of how we how we are to be with them uh, you know, philosophical aspect to them um, survival aspect to them you know it's it's a it's a different way for me I thought of animals a little differently after this in a, in a good way fantastic to that hear. is fantastic to hear. Yeah, yeah you know a lot of the the yeah. characters was creating a network of people who are all kind of responding to cryptids in different ways um, and then that's kind of feeding yeah. the, the universe of the, the movie. Well, to go off of that, I think what I was really struck by is this is a story about dreams and the weaponizing of that. Um, you know, I know Lake was saying this was this was a four year journey, but you know, for for Dash and, and Jane, 
is it weird to be talking about this movie now having the culmination of it as we're we are talking about 2020 and the dreams of that year and i mean it takes on this added prescience is that is that weird great you know just great timing i mean what is it like to be talking about the movie now in the wake of of the last year yeah you know people would talk about coronavirus dreams being kind of especially um vivid and bizarre and um but uh for the the movie takes place in kind of, it's like sort of takes place in 1967 we never give a date on it but it's kind of in the late 60s and that was inspired by um I had a fellowship at the New York Public Library where I was researching a book on Quakers during the Civil War. And one of the other fellows there was um, researching um, uh, basically countercultural newspapers from around the world, like Brazil, ev like everywhere, getting all of the free papers. And the New York Library had all of these. And it was really cool and amazing that, that all of those papers all over had a similar, um, not, not only, that countercultural like spirit, but um, aesthetic in the drawings that there was something in the water then when um, Aubrey Beardsley was kind of had a renewed um, uh, popularity, that kind of thin line Art Nouveau-ish style that kind of is, uh, creates the, what we think of as sort of a 60s-ish look. Um, so it, it was a, you know, think like before the internet, it was like a global um, look attached to a, movement of, um, so in the similarities to today, uh, you know, honestly, when I, when I, there was, I guess it, it's not new, you know, like the, all of the things, if anything, all of the things that happened in 2020 across the board were, were maybe like, uh, just like in a relationship, it was under the surface and then it was brought forth under a stressed um, circumstance. That's you know, how I, I think of it. I think, Dash did write the story before Trump was even elected. It's been a long time coming to this, but um, Dash, when he writes, really writes with with an honest question in his heart about about what the pe his characters feel, and and I think that you know, regardless of what political climate we find ourselves now in now, that those were always and still are honest questions about what is right and what is yeah, and keeping for. it specific to the characters. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I also think that you know it's so fun and so sort of interesting to see how things resonate given, you know, over the course of the time. I mean, it certainly relate to the idea of writing something sort of like eight years prior to it coming out, you know, and like the journey of what that is, certainly an indie film, you know. Um, and I think that this, I think Cryptozoo really does have a really, like you were saying a little bit, Grace, this um, perspective on compassion, you know, like, this, this, whether it's misguided or, you know, um, altruistic, you know, um, and sort of that in itself feels um, just as from a sort of humanitarian aspect, you know, mm -hmm. perspective uh, in, in the wake of 2020, I, I do think um, there, it is sort of eerily um, uh, resonant. Yes, what we consider, who we consider worth um, saving, and 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 why, and you know, it's just it, it's you know uh, the hierarchy of who's who who can live and how they live. You know, it, there's something that yes. um, that resonates certainly for me. And, and this and the, and this whole the, the whole piece sort of forces you to sort of come away with more of an understanding of the totality of, of life and the, the right to live of, of all, all of us, you know, animals, humans. There's an implicit understanding of that somehow that um, couldn't have been so successfully preached. It had to be shown at every minute and it yeah. does do that. Well, Lake, you know, this is the story about a community of, of outsiders, especially the, the crypto zoo. You know, for you, why is community so important right now? And is there a specific person or community that comes to mind that's helped you through recently? Yeah, I mean, it's really, you know, we were talking about this earlier, but I think Sundance, you know, it, 
is so sort of dear for me. I mean, that was the first um, sort of filmic community that I um, got to kind of participate in and got invited to in a way that I felt like, well, damn, you know, like I've made it now, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> that was my North Star, certainly. Um, and uh, CryptoZoo is the kind of movie where you go, oh yes, this is a community where this can flourish and exist. And there's something tremendously comforting in that, especially when we feel so, um, so alone, <laughs> so, you know, um, isolated. And there is, you know, a, a, a really um, special kind of um, unique experience to be a part of Sundance. And I think that community um, and having, you know, just being like in the mix, you know, is, is, is really special in this time. Um, it's creators, it's, 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 it's minds, um, like Grace said too, um, building something that hadn't existed before, you know, that, that's quite um, hard to do. <laughs> There's a lot of story out there. Um, but I do think, you know, I find Sundance to be a community that has given and offered much sustenance over the years. And, um, you know, yeah. as I, films too, you know, moving forward. I always consider it as a, as a North Star. So I, 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 um, I take it really seriously and it's, it's, it's important, you know, to, to all creators and filmmakers, they, they need that, you know, we need that motivation and that, mm -hmm. um, that generosity of spirit, you know. There's just something about it that makes me wish the damn movie could come out. I know. Tomorrow. I know. So right. now. <laughs> Really, we all be there, and we could all you know, it's like the the kind of I love being in Sundance because then you just meet people in your class. I I love the idea. That's my class, my class of you know, of twenty twenty one. You know, and you get to go. Oh, these are the filmmakers there. You're the actors here. The producer. This is where you know that's that's part of the assembling of your future teams. You know, a lot of the times is there. Um, and as I assemble my next feature, I'm just like, damn it, if I could only be at Sundance and like meet all these people, you know? So. Well, with, with that, you know, I think that the opening of this this movie really sets the tone and, you know, for, for Louisa especially, I mean, there's, Amber is a character that we don't know a whole lot about uh, at the beginning of the movie, but, you know, how did you want to imbue her with life through your voice performance? That's such a good question. Um, you know, I asked Dash, I was like, what, you know, do you want, do you need anything specific, you know? And he's just like, no, just you, what, you know, what, I trust you, you know? And, and that really, that's such a gift when your director trusts you and I have such faith in Dash, I've worked with him in the past. I also, talking about the whole incredible Sundance community, I met Dash initially at, the, at a Sundance film lab and I was such a fan of his then so it's like, oh my gosh, to be a part of any of his worlds, like, please sign me up. <laughs> Just the knowledge that he has and the, his artistry and everything. And um, yeah, but I, oh God, it was so long ago. And, and it was over the course of like, you know, years. And then the real challenging part was having to like, do some re-records in my in my closet, because I don't have a sound, you know, I don't know, I freaking went into my closet. I've got hanging like clothes like I'm like crouched down and I'm trying to like get into this emotional state but you know you just it's just about fully committing and and that's why this character especially she really goes on a journey so like to be able to do that with my voice but also like get into it really go there um you know that's that's a treat to be able to 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 to, to full on just commit um and uh yeah I, I i what a cool character i'm i'm i'm, I'm just <laughs> glad I, I, that he asked me to do it <laughs> yeah, well, you know the voice acting in so many cartoons is very broad and goofy and the the goal for this one was to be um you know realistic and specific and so that that's usually uh the and and then and then sometimes there's the other the other realm where it's very dry and kind of um, uh, there's a dissonance between how people are speaking versus their environment. But I really, really tried with this one to kind of make it feel like 
it's actual people experiencing an actual thing because otherwise if it feels like nothing is ever actually happening to anyone in a cartoon you don't know why you should care um there has to be like a soul inside of all of the drawings that are really um um tra traveling and i mean i think what this script was about for dash and what the film was always about for me was the each of these individual people and and what they wanted from this imaginary realm and so it was so critical to have actors that could really bring like Not, a know, humanity to that, um, you know. And also, you know, obviously Lake um, made a whole film about voices and that was really exciting that that there would be, you know, an actor who, who seemed like she had a, uh, a mission on her own that could kind of align with the mission of the movie. Yeah, I mean, I I take it very seriously. <laughs> like, any voice <laughs> acting that I'm doing, I'm like, oh yeah, like this is me living the dream. Like the idea of doing a a, a feature um, that's totally uh, completely different than anything I've ever done is also really appealing. I think the coolest part of our job is getting to not just exist as different characters, but really to exist in different genres and worlds. You know. And so this was certainly <laughs> I had never um, uh, participated in before. But yes, as a voiceover artist, I was like, sign me. <laughs> well, I used to do I used to do um, like uh, radio plays at drama school. You know where you you you're you know you're kind of in the headspace of you're not trying to get a laugh. You know you're just taking people on a journey. It was is more similar. It, it felt more similar to those experiences kind of like radio play. Yeah, yeah like the night like the 1940s and and all of that it's very much that auditory type of of journey there. So, you don't hear yeah, that a lot. <laughs> there there are contemporary radio plays too. Sure, yes. Uh, yeah, and and which feel not quite as, you know, harken you know, harkening from another time. They, they, that we were doing them kind of in, you know, the, like the late 90s, you know, just doing kind of and like early oddies, you know, just like, just radio plays, plays and using Foley and creating, it's basically like the early podcast, right? Like um, kind of experience, but but yeah. So I, I definitely feel like that was exciting. Well, you know, Lake brought up going on a journey and you know, the IndieWire crew were big Twin Peaks fans and they they would, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask the question that they, they were asking about for Grace, which is, you know, your character, it was such a narrative arc on, on Twin Peaks, The Return, you were the heart of the show. Uh, have you talked with David Lynch at all about another season? No one in the world could probably get him to say there would be another season and you wouldn't have been able to three years ago either. So that's irrelevant. But um, but the last time I talked to him, he said, well, I hope we get to work together soon as if that were, you know, partly up to me. <laughs> but um, I, don't, I don't know the answer to that. If I'm gonna ever, if he's gonna do it. He's, we're both woodworkers and that's pretty much what we talk about, tools. If anybody wants to talk movies with David Lynch, good luck. <laughs> no, we talk about tools and techniques. And... I'm like writing notes. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. Grace has a website with a lot of her work on it. Dear Mr. Lynch. <laughs> uh, I, can I, I, I can't hear what anyone said just now because it was breaking up. Oh, it was good. It was really good. <laughs> We're all just very enthusiastically doing this. <laughs> There's a lot of David Lynch love. Uh <laughs> yeah.